already. Okay, good. This is Panasonic camera 101. So we have Panasonic studio cameras and actually we end up using them in the field quite a bit more. Um, they're a studio quality prosumer camera. We store them in C228 here, charging stations and some bays where they park. Come on in a little closer. We've got Alpha, Bravo and Charlie, Delta, um, Echo, Foxtrot. That's what hopefully we'll acquire as we go along. Military spec for ABC, camera A. Our Alpha camera, we're going to use this. We have a set of headphones because we want to be able to hear as the camera hears. It's super important that you've got earbuds, headphones that you can use when you're using these cameras. We're going to grab a camera out of here. They may be plugged in like this to charge. The charging port over here, right on the side where the next to where the headphones go in, there is a barrel charger that goes in here and it will light up and tell you, yep, I'm charging. Green light down on the bottom there. Ooh, looks like it's got a little bit of a Probably not the best port there. Did not notice that. Not good. Make sure that it's charging. Okay. Charlie is charging. Um, Alpha, we've got a charging packs here for external batteries. We've got some big batteries. Uh, last four or five hours in the field. Before we go out though, this one's got a battery in. We want to check and make sure that it's good to go. We have four bars here, so we're good. If we're not, we release that battery by pushing this button and sliding the battery up. It has openings here for contacts for the battery. We would swap this with this charger. We wanna make sure visually that we push down and up and in, and that battery contacts fully, it'll show up on the screen, okay? So that one's good to go. I'm gonna pop it out, it's at 90%, so we'll put it back to use. Uh, contact points here, contact points on the camera inside here. So the battery has to invert or read correctly upright to the back all the way, then down, you'll hear it lock in. Chair for you. Okay, so we talked about battery charging. We've got power to our camera. We're good to go there. These field packs will last three, four hours at least. Next thing we're going to talk about, uh, base plate. You saw that there was one on there. We're going to leave it on the camera in all instances. Normally, we're going to be stabilizing these cameras, so there's no reason to remove a base plate that is installed properly and good and tight. Uh, we don't need to take this off every time. Just cause more opportunity for damage. Let's talk about on and off. Come on in. On and off, right here. So we're going to switch on. That's going to turn our camera on to record mode. If we want to be able to see feedback wise, we're going to slide out our viewfinder and rotate it up. And that's going to give us a few pieces of information. Number one, battery, upper right hand corner. We can see that. And number two, it's telling us, hey, if you want to record right now, you're not gonna be able to because there's no uh, storage in here. Let's do gel pen. We got red and red, no good, okay? So next is SD card. We are using SD Secure Digital. You can also use a micro SD with a converter. They work. This one does not have a micro SD in it, but you understand the concept is the same. These only go in one direction. I can't stress enough. Do not put a card in backwards and force it. I would be beyond disappointed. You will see my you failed me face, okay? Come in closer here. There is a uh, two doors here. The back door is for our audio. Front door is just for our media, okay? Now, if you look at this, it is indexed. It does show you that the teeth of the card or the contact points should be facing you when they go in. So if you look at that, like, oh, wait a second, that clipped corner is down there and it matches up with card slot number one. So if I go in like this, and then I'm gonna push that in until it detent locks. Unlock, lock, they're spring loaded. Okay, it's locked in. Once I push that in, it's gonna show up here. It will take a little bit of time to read. Oh yeah, not awesome light that way, huh? How's that? And I've got 43 minutes of record time on this card. Now, if I found that this card was full or if it said um, unable to write, here's the first thing I'm gonna check. I'm gonna punch that card back out and I'm gonna make sure that my uh, write protect slider is up. If the right protect slider is down, which happens because when we push the card in, it can catch. What this does is it protects anybody from writing more information on the card or 
reformatting it. So the most logical is make sure that our lock or our right protect is unlocked and up. Now I'm gonna put that back in. Let's talk about formatting. So uh, we're gonna jump into the menu structure and this is um, important for uh, if we want to clear the card and have a fresh format on it. This is assuming we have taken everything off here that's important and we don't, uh, we don't wanna erase content that we're not sure of. Uh, actually, before that, how would we know if there's content on it that's of value? How do you view clips that have already been recorded? You use this thumbnail button up here. I think it's the dumbest thing ever to review content because it doesn't say playback or watch these clips here. It says thumbnail. Uh, it's the thumbnail views of the files that are on here. So when I hit that, I see that, oh, I've got a bunch of content from, looks like the Bemidji game for football. Well, season's over, okay? Time to move on. So we're gonna go over how to format this. I would hit the thumbnail button again to go back to live view and my record settings. I'm gonna use that thumbnail all the time in the field to review content. I'll make sure that I got it. Yep, that clip is there. Good, what format are they in, et cetera. Okay, so I'll switch back here. Let's go over how to format. We're gonna go into the menu structure and we can get there a couple ways. We can touch the screen and go menu. And, or we can hit the menu roller down here. We'll bring up the same menu, okay? So um, a few things to look at here. Formatting, boy, that angle's not right. Should we find a better angle here? Got some backlighting on it. Oh, it's the overhead light, I didn't have that. How's that? See if you can set up right on at it. Yeah, on the table. Beauty, that's better, okay. So um, we'll just go through these and see what's in here for the basics. Camera setup, there's not gonna be a ton that you are going to control or adjust in camera setup. <clears throat> System mode, this is where we would tell uh, the camera, hey, I wanna record in 60 frame per second, or I'm cool with just 1080 for a resolution and 30 frame per second. Notice that in the current format, which is an MP4, we only have four options. Where do we get to that, I wanna format the card at? Well, that's down in um, other functions and format media. So one more time here, all the way in, let's go touch screen menu. I'm gonna go to the second page here. Weird, why did that change? Other function and format media. Click on that once, it's like, which one SD? It's like, are you sure? Yes. Are you really sure? Yes. And now we wait. And what it's doing is it's re it's clearing this card and writing it for kind of an optimal blank slate for the camera so that it gets best possible recording. Mm -hmm. Lots of content on there, a couple games worth, I know that. All has been uploaded to Google Drive, so peace of mind there. And editing, cutting out content. Once it's finished, we exit. On the intro uh, or level 101 video here, uh, the only other settings we might want to turn off or on, our pre-record here helps newbie recorders to not miss content. So this means it's going to be actually recording three seconds before you hit the button. It's constantly buffering. It takes a little more battery, but it's constantly buffering and dumping a three second clip before you hit record. It's nice if you are doing interviews or action uh, work, et cetera, where you don't wanna miss something and you might have to hit the record button. Beyond that, we're gonna go into some deeper detail here in the 201 and 301. I wanted to look at system mode one more time. Oh, hang on, system mode. Yeah, and record mode. So we have three different codecs that we can record in. MOV, think QuickTime, ABC HD, that is Panasonic 101, and MP4, we may have heard that's a very common codec as well. If we switch over to ABC HD and go into our formats, notice that we have quite a few more options here. Now we can record in 720 at 60 frame per second, so it's a lower resolution but higher frame rate. Or we've got a few other options. We've got that 1080 with the 24 frame per second, which would be more of our uh, rolling silver shutter, uh, our cinema effect, okay? So we have more options here. I will tell you that 
MOV files are gonna be the largest for um, megabytes per minute. And MP4s are kind of going to probably be your most acceptable format in multiple different um, editing platforms or just as bare clips, okay? Okay, um, that is the basics on menu setup. I have a card reformatted and now I have an hour and 24 minutes of space available. Other information really important here, I have 60 frame per second for frame rate and 1080p for uh, resolution. That's all what I can see in here. Notice I don't have any sound or gain bars, so that's concerning. On the level one, let's just jump into um, making sure that the camera is hearing sound or how do we verify that? Well, before we hit record, we need to hear as the camera hears. So I think I have shown you this in the audio ones, but headphone port, 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch audio aux goes all the way and make sure you push it in so it seats all the way in, that's common. And I'm gonna listen and see if I can hear anything and I'm hearing some echo, but not awesome sound. So at a very basic level, I'm gonna go in here and tell the uh, camera that I want it to be an in internal because I don't have any external audio hooked up. So I am recording through this microphone right here. Both of these are slid up to internal. Um, the input one and two do not matter right now because we're not set on those. The only thing that would matter would be gain and gain is not affected because I can hear it on internal. So it would only be for external audio as well. While we're over here, one other setting for the 101 right here, our IA versus manual. We want to shoot on instant auto normally because manual would be, okay, we're controlling exposure and everything else, okay? So instant auto is our fail safe. The camera is going to take care of white balance, uh, exposure control, focus, a whole bunch of other um, automated features that just let us focus on grabbing good content, okay? So instant auto for the level 101, we'll get to manual uh, in the future. A few other features and functions that we have to look at. My volume was up for my headphones. Let's see if I can reproduce that. When I plug my headphones back in, this is up and it's, I'm not getting any other information. So like, how do I get rid of it? I, I can bump my volume level up for my headphones so that I can hear uh, easier. But what I did was I just, oh, there it went away. Maybe it's a time thing. I hit the menu button and then menued out again. Let's talk about zoom. We've got three different ways we can control zoom. First one is there's a top rocker. It's like a micro rocker. And that would be if I'm holding the camera up like upright like this and I want to be able to zoom in and out. It doesn't have finite rocker adjustment. It's only one speed, so you can notice there it's zooming at a constant speed. I can't like throttle or control the speed of this. If I wanna do that, I wanna use the main rocker on the um, right hand side here. And if you can catch both of those in the same frame, how does that look? Very good. So I can go really fast or I can throttle that. And if I'm very controlled, I can slow it down. I have very finite control. Our third method, is the second ring in will allow you to manually use an iris ring to zoom in and out. So that's cool. You can do the office effect if you've got the camera stabilized. If you're holding by hand, you'll notice it it, it causes you to sh to move. Oh, no, there we go. Causes you to move quite a bit. But students seem to love this. Feel like a pro. Okay, you're running something there. That's cool. All right. Um, finally, record. Your options for record. You've got the button here right next to our power, which is our main record. If our hand is up and in and we are holding like this, then it's logical to hit that record. There's also a top record if we're in studio or holding it sling style, we can hit this button. And we have a P-Rec, which shows up. P-Rec means pre-record. That's just the function that's in there. We also would know because the LED on the front of this is going to light up red. And it should be red right now. If we stop recording, it's going to go blue and it's in chill mode. Okay, uh, I think that's it for 101 basics and we are going to take a break there. We'll move into 201 functions in the next video.